Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, so these are the questions uh, given by sir. And uh, we are going to solve these questions. Now, question number 10, A, B, C, <clears throat> 1, X, 3, 3, 4, 7, and uh, Y minus 2 and minus 5. You are given three points, A, B, C, having the position vectors 1, 2, and 3. Right. Now, the question is regarding, they said they are collinear. Find the value of X and Y. Now, what do you mean by collinear? Whenever you have some three points are collinear, obviously, all those three points lie on the same length. Collinear in the sense lying on the same line. Right. So in space, when we are talking about, we cannot talk about the slopes, isn't it? So two dimensional, we can talk about slope. So what is a replica for two dimensional uh, slope in three dimensional? That is nothing but DRs, isn't it? So can we say that DRs of AB is proportional to DRs of BC, right? So let me take DRs of AB proportional to DRs of just DRs of BC, right? Now coming for what are DRs of AB? So DRs of AB. So nothing but x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, z2 minus z1, right? So 3 minus 1 and 4 minus x and 7 minus 3, that is 4. Now coming for your DRs of uh, BC, you can consider that to be y minus 3, minus 2 minus 4, that is minus 6, minus 5, minus 7, which is minus 12, right? So whenever I said they are proportional, that means their ratio remains the same. So 2 by y minus 3 equal to 4 minus x by minus 6, which is equal to 4 by minus 12, right? So cancellation can be done here. 4 ones and 4 threes, right? Now, equating these two, you get y. Equating these two, you'll be getting your x, isn't it? So equating with this one. So first and the third one, observe here. So y minus 3 equal to minus 3 into 2, which is minus 6. So y equal to minus 3. Isn't it? So minus 6 plus 3. Now equating the these two, which means 4 minus x equal to 2 because minus 6 by minus 3, which means x equal to 2. That's it. So your x and y are these values, right? Now, question number 13, you are given the points A, B, C, D. You are given four points here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, they said <clears throat> all these points are coplanar, right? Position vectors of the points are coplanar in the sense. What do we have to do? We need to construct some artificial vectors. That is taking the position vector right from point A. So, that is A, B, A, C, A, D is what I have constructed. A, B, A, C, A, D. A, B in the sense O, B minus O, A. So, you can just subtract these two and get your A, B, A, C, and A, D. Now, these three vectors are coplanar in the sense. Their box will be equal to zero, which means the determinant of A, B, A, C, A, D. If you equate this to zero, you can end up with finding your value of lambda. Clear with that? So that lambda can be found very easily using determinant equal to zero. Do it, you may get it. Uh, yes, now question number 18 here. If G is the centroid of the triangle A, B, C, A, B, C is a triangle. They said G is the centroid. Centroid is the point of intersection of all the medians. Right. So centroid formula is what? So x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3, y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3. So that is what uh, you get your centroid in two dimensional geometry. Now the question is regarding if G is a centroid, GA plus GB plus GC. This is equal to how much? This is our question. And yesterday, if you remember, we have done a rule like GA plus GB plus GC, which is nothing but equal to resulting in zero. And why? Just have a quick recap of what we have done. So when we are taking about the position vector OG, which is nothing but equal to A plus B plus C by 3, isn't it? Because it's centroid X1 plus X2 plus X3 by 3. So OG will be your A plus B plus C by 3. Now what will be GA? The question is regarding what is GA plus GB plus GC? This is general rule what I'm deriving again. So what is a GA equal to OA minus OG, isn't it? OA minus OG. OA is nothing but A minus OG is A plus B plus C by 3. Taking their LCM, GA equal to this is 3A minus A. That will become 2A minus B minus C by 3. 
right so that's your ga similarly you get your gb and similarly you get your gc adding all these three what do we get ga plus gb plus gc equal to 0 is what we get now this is a rule what we have derived also yesterday also right now coming question is what what is ga plus bg plus gc in terms of something else isn't it now think about this ga plus gc observe only these two ga plus gc now your question has ga plus gc now here also we have ga plus gc isn't it so what is ga plus gc equal to send gb to the other side it becomes minus gb is that clear so can i replace this in my question what i have in place of ga plus gc i am going to go with yeah, just a minute yeah ga plus gc which is nothing but equal to minus gb now in place of ga plus gc i am substituting minus gb plus bg is that clear right now minus gb is same as bg agree with that bg plus bg which is 2bg will be your answer is that clear so 2bg is your answer there Right, so after 18th question there, going for question number 20. Now, question number 20, if you observe, it's regarding what we have done yesterday. This kind also was completed yesterday. If two vectors are the sides of the parallelogram, observe this is side A and this is side B, let it be. So if these are the two vectors which are sides of the parallelogram, then the unit vector parallel to one of its diagonals. So what are the diagonals? Diagonal 1 can be your A plus B. We have already derived. Diagonal 2 is your B minus A. So figure out these both and find out their unit vectors. So there ends your question number 20. Right? Next, going for question number in the order we have 22nd question was given. Right. Now for question number 22, okay, find the unit vector making angles pi by 6, pi by 3 and pi by 6 in the direction of, okay, fine. So these are the three angles which are given to you. Now what could be your DCs? Is it like cos alpha which is nothing but equal to cos pi by 6, cos beta that is cos pi by 6, cos gamma that is cos pi by 3, isn't it? Now, what is pi by 6? 30 degrees. So, cos 30 is root 3 by 2. Here also we have root 3 by 2 and cos 60 which is 1 by 2, right? Now, as these are L, M and N, the relation what L, M, N should hold is L square plus M square plus N square to be equal to 1. Do we have that to be equal to 1? Think about it. So L square, which is 3 by 4, plus M square, which is again 3 by 4 squaring, just squaring these, plus N square, that is 1 by 4. Right? So 3 plus 3 is 7 by 4 is what we got, which is definitely not equal to 1. Hence, can we find the unit vector making such angles? Because we have, we are given such a data where, one of the options is impossible to get these vectors, isn't it? So just try to figure out whether can we get it or not. Is that clear? Right. So question number 22 is done. Now going for 28 in the order. So wherever you have any doubts, please pause the recording. Watch it again carefully. Clear? Okay, question number 28, you are given A, B, C are your three vectors. Then the ratio in which C divides A, B internally. So C is a point in between A and B. C is dividing A, B internally in which ratio? C, suppose if the question is about 2D, right? So if it is a line segment, so A, B and C is dividing. So what is the ratio in which C is dividing? If you suppose your A to be X1, Y1, B to be X2, Y2, and C to be your X, Y, do you remember the ratio in which AB is dividing? Uh, C is dividing AB. In the ratio, X1 minus X is to X minus X2. Clear? So same way we can do here also. So that is 
uh, your x1 is nothing but 2 minus 9 by 5. This is 9 by 5. Observe. Is 2. 9 by 5 is 2. Here we have x2 is 1. Got it? So take the LCM. That is uh, 10 minus 9 by 5 is 2. 9 minus 5 by 5. So obviously 1 is to 4 will be your answer. There 5 and 5 gets cancelled. 1 is to 4 is the ratio in which C is dividing AB internally. Clear? Yes. Now for the question number 31, you are given e equal to Li plus Mj plus Nk which is a unit vector. Unit vector in the sense its magnitude is 1. Hence, I can say L square plus M square plus N square equal to 1. Right. And you're already given L equal to 1 by 3. Just substitute that. So L equal to 1 by 3 in the sense is it M square plus N square is 1 minus L square. L square is 1 by 9, which means it is 9 minus 1. 8 by 9 is your M square plus N square. Cleared in this point? Right. Now, the question is regarding what is the maximum value of L, M and N. Now, whenever we have some of these two and we want the product value. So, one most important formula, one most beautiful concept which will be helping us is arithmetic mean is always greater than or equal to geometric mean. So, for the two numbers M square and N square, I am going to go with arithmetic mean greater than or equal to geometric mean. Right. So what is the arithmetic mean? M square plus N square by 2. A plus B by 2 greater than or equal to root AB. Isn't it? Root M square N square. Right. So from here, M square plus N square is always greater than or equal to 2MN. Is this point clear? Right. And what is your M square plus N square? We can always substitute that, isn't it? So 8 by 9 greater than or equal to 2MN, which means I can just cancel them down. So your MN is less than or equal to 4 by 9, right? So MN is less than or equal to 4 by 9 is what we got. Now, question is regarding LMN. right? So why can't we just multiply by L on both sides? Because L is anyhow, yeah, yeah just a minute. So I'm at the door. Yeah, let's go ahead. So when we are just multiplying by L on both sides, which means we are just multiplying by 1 by 3, or you may call it dividing by 3. So divided by 3, your inequality will not be changing at all, isn't it? So this is nothing but MN or LMN less than or equal to 4 by 9 times L is your 1 by 3. So this is less than or equal to <clears throat> 4 by 27. So your LMN will be a value which is less than or equal to 4 by 27 because that means 4 by 27 is the max to max value which it can attain isn't it so that's the maximum value what it can have so 4 by 27 will be your answer for this question All right so for the question number 34 the position vectors of a b c are you are given three vectors there then the position vector of the circumcenter of the triangle a b c is what is the question right now, uh, whenever you have a question based on circumcenter or orthocenter, so just to figure out whether maybe it is it forming a right angle triangle or not, if you can figure out that would be a better idea to solve the question because for a right angle triangle, we know the vertex containing the 90 degrees is always orthocenter and the midpoint of the hypotenuse is always the circumcenter. Isn't it? So if at all the given triangle is becoming a right angle triangle, it be the question becomes much simpler for us. We can just figure out what is the midpoint of the hypotenuse that ends our question. Right. So now for we are only given A, B, C. These are the position vectors of A, B, C. These are nothing but the points A, B, C which are given to us. Right. So find out what is this uh, A, B. So what is the vector A, B which is nothing but 3, 0, 0. Right. So you can write it in its vector form. BC is nothing but 0, 5 minus uh, 1, that is 4 and 0. Right. We have a CA, 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 which is nothing but 3. Um, CA is 3, 5 minus 1 is 4 and 0. Right. So when we observe, now tell me something. So AB is it nothing but 3i. And BC is nothing but 4J. 
isn't it? So which means what? C1 is along. This is our x-axis and uh, y, i, j, k, isn't it? So one is along x-axis and the other is along y-axis, isn't it? See, this will be your 3i vector and that will be your 4j vector, isn't it? So which means these two are definitely perpendicular. Now we just got that these two are perpendicular, which means AB is perpendicular to BC. Now draw the figure. AB is perpendicular to BC in the sense where do we have 90 degrees? At B. This is A and this is B, right? So this is C, sorry, right? So AB is perpendicular to BC. We got a right angle triangle. The question became very simple for us now. The question is regarding, if the question is regarding orthocenter, immediately vertex B is your orthocenter there. Question is regarding circumcenter, figure out what is the midpoint of the hypotenuse. That is your circumcenter. So midpoint of the points A and C. For these two, you figure out what is the midpoint. That is 4 plus 1, 5 by 2. And 5 plus 1, 6 by 2. And 1 plus 1, 2 by 2. So this will be your point, which is... Uh, 5 by 2 and 6 by 2 and 2 by 2. I think the other option 3 will be matching for your question there. Right. Yes, for the question number 35, the vectors A, B and A, C are given to us. So this is nothing but A, B and A, C. These are the sides of a triangle A, B, C and the length of the median through A, median through A. So what about the median through A, we have already known this, isn't it? That is nothing but AB plus AC by 2, isn't it? So the vector AD is always AB plus AC by 2. Figure out what is AB plus AC by 2 that you can easily find out. And the question is regarding the length, find its magnitude. There ends your question. Clear? Magnitude of that AB plus AC by 2 gives your answer. Clear at that question? Now, for the question number 36 there, yeah, so observe the question what they have given. Let G and G dash be the centroids of the triangle ABC and A dash, B dash, C dash, right? So G is the centroid for the first triangle ABC, G dash is the centroid for the next triangle A dash, B dash, C dash. Then the question is regarding what is A dash, B, B dash and C, C dash. They are asking the answer in terms of G, G dash, right? Now, what is a centroid OG, isn't it? So what is OG equal to? OG is same as OA plus OB plus OC by 3 because centroid X1 plus X2 plus X3 by 3, Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 by 3. Similarly, in the vector notation, we can do that, isn't it? Right, now coming for OG equal to, I have written in its vector form, OG is OA plus OB plus OC by 3. Similarly, OG dash is OA dash plus OB dash plus OC dash by 3. Question is regarding A dash, B, B dash, C, C dash. Now, can I write this in terms of G and G dash using the position vector? That is, um, can I take, um, yeah, let me go with, yeah, in terms of O is, yeah, starting with O. That is O A dash minus O A plus O B dash minus O B plus O C dash minus O C, isn't it? So, all these I can write it that way. Right, so OA dash minus OA. This is BB OB dash minus OB, and this is OC dash minus OC. Now pair up all these positives together. OA dash plus OB dash plus OC dash. These three together from here. From here, what is this equal to? Three times OG dash minus the remaining minus take common OA dash OB dash OC dash, which is nothing but three times OG. Clear. Right. Now you can take a three common that is uh, OG dash minus OG. Right. Can you replace this with uh, mm, as the question is regarding G, G dash or G dash G. If at all I am making this positive OG dash plus GO dash. No, it is turning out to be in terms of O. So let us not go this way. Change OG dash as minus G dash O minus OG. Is that clear? Now you can take a minus common. So minus three times. This is a G dash O minus OG. Now is it same as the writing minus three times? 
no, this is minus plus, isn't it? Right, minus is already moved. So this is nothing but uh, g dash o plus o g, which is nothing but g dash g, right? So minus three times g dash g, which can be written like three times g g dash. Clear? So g dash g, if you take a negative sign for that, it becomes g g dash because vector a is same as writing minus of if you take uh, yeah a b vector it is same as writing minus b a vector isn't it so the same rule is applied here for the final answer that is three times g g dash is that clear that will be your answer right now observe question number 43 the vector equation of a plane through the points 1 minus 2 minus 3 so 1 minus 2 minus 3 is a point it is passing through the point that is point A and parallel to the vectors, this I will consider B and C, this is my A, okay. So parallel to the vectors B and C, so observe the plane figure, so it is passing through a point A and parallel to the vector B and C. So as we know point A itself is meaningless, so we need to make an artificial vector through point B, so that is AP, which is nothing but what is the vector equation, how can we write now, right. So now, AP is nothing but TB plus SC, isn't it? Equation of a plane passing through this. Just a minute here. Right. So now go ahead. So that is nothing but your R minus A equal to TB plus SC. So R is nothing but equal to A plus TB plus SC. Right. So what is your uh, A, B and C? You just substitute those values, you get your final answer. Later, figure out properly, carefully for your i, j, k values, isn't it? So A is your i minus 2j minus 3k plus t times b. Vector b is your 2i minus j plus 3k plus s times 2i plus 3j minus 6k. Is that clear? So all these three, what you need to do is solving part, do it very carefully. Take i common. Here you have one. There you have plus 2t. Here you'll have plus 2s. Right? Next, plus j if you take, that will be minus 2, minus t and plus 3s. Next, plus k if you take, that is minus 3, plus 3t, minus 6s, isn't it? Right. So whichever be the best option, you just mark it out. So here negative sign is common. If you observe your options, negative sign is common, taken out and then you can figure it out. Right. So there ends your question 43. Right. Now the question number 10, um, in the quadrilateral A, B, C, D, a, B equal to A, B, C is B, A, D is B minus A. So, A, B vector is A, B, C vector is B and A, D vector is B minus A is given and also given M is the midpoint of B, C. M is the midpoint of B, C, right? Such that <clears throat> N is a point on D, M, N is a point on D, M, wherein D, N is 4 by 5 D, M your dn equal to 4 by 5 times dm. Now, the question is regarding what is an, right? This is our question. So, in order to get what is an, first thing what we need to understand is by triangle law, what is an? An is same as ad plus dm, right? Perfect. Now, ad length is what ab vector is what I have it. I can substitute for b minus a plus dn. What is dn? dn I don't have. But dn is 4 by 5 times dm. So ad plus 4 by 5 times dn. So this is what I have. But dm is what I don't have. That is what I need to figure out. Now, what is dm? Can I say it as am minus ad? Right? So am minus ad is dm. Agree with that? With a position vector starting from a if I observe. So am minus ad. Is that clear? Now, how do I get AM? What is AM? 
this M is the midpoint of B and C, isn't it? So can I say AM equal to midpoint of BC, right? AB uh, plus AC by 2. Your AM is nothing but AB plus AC by 2. So what is your AB? AB is nothing but A plus AC. AC do we know? No, we don't know. But we know from triangle law. What is AC? AC is AB plus BC, which is A plus B. Okay, that is why I'm substituting there. So AC is nothing but A plus B by 2. So finally, what I can conclude? AM is 2A plus B by 2. This is what I have. AM is what I got it. Now my question is, I need DM, isn't it? So from the earlier one, what is DM? DM is nothing but AM minus AD. <clears throat> AM is your 2A plus B by 2 minus AD. AD you already have it. What is your AD? AD is nothing but B minus A. Take the LCM properly. So that is your 2A plus B minus 2B plus 2A. Right, which is nothing but 4A minus B by 2. That's your DM. All right. Now, I got DM value. Now, my final step is AN. AN is same as AD plus DN, isn't it? See, observe here, AN triangle law, AN equal to AD plus DN. So, AN is AD plus DN, which is same as 4 by 5 times DM. Now, I have everything. What is AD? AD is B minus A plus 4 by 5 times. I already found DM. What is the DM? 4A minus B by 2. Now, what is it? You can take two ones, two twos. You can go with uh, right. Okay. So take the LCM. That is your 5B minus 5A plus 8A minus 2B by 5. Right. So 5B minus 2B, that is your 3B. 5A minus 8A, that is a plus 3A by 5. So 3, if you take common, A plus B by 5. So that is your 3 by 5 times A plus B. Right. But what is this A plus B? A plus B is same as your AC, isn't it? So can you figure out the 3 by 5 times A plus B? A plus B is same as AC. Got it? So finally, I ended up with finding out A and is same as 3 by 5 AC. 3 by 5 AC. That's my answer. Clear? So understand carefully a little solving part involved in this. Draw the figure uh, quadrilateral properly A, B, C, D with the given inputs. Later, you go for question, what is AN? What do we know regarding AN? AN, applying the triangle law, AD plus DN. So AD plus DN, I have written. What is DN? It's already given. That is 4 by 5 times DM. Now, my intention is to find DM. DM, what is DM? According to me, DM is nothing but AM minus AD. Do I have AM? What is AM? Because M is the midpoint of BC. AM is nothing but AB plus AC by 2. So what is your AB? AB is nothing but A plus AC. AC is again A plus B using triangle law, right? So AC is nothing but A plus B by 2. Now, if you observe, AM is what you got it. Find out what is DM, that is AM minus AD. You have all these values, substitute for your DM, got it. Next, your AN is what you need. AN is nothing but AD plus DN. And DN is 4 by 5 times DM. Clear? So just substitute the values, figure out what is happening here. Yes, now looking at the question number 11. The median AD of triangle ABC is bisected at E. See, observe carefully. AD is bisected at E in the sense AD is made exactly half by E. Clear? So AD is bisected at E. Now what they said, BE is produced. BE extend and see that it is joining to meet AC at F. Okay, so that is meeting AC at F. Then the ratio of question is regarding what is AF is to FC. This is our question. 
Observe carefully median AD. That is the median what I have drawn. AD, median in the sense, obviously, BD equal to DC, right? So median AD is bisected at E. So bisected at E. That means E is the midpoint of AD, right? And B is extended. B is produced to meet the side AC at F. Now the ratio of AF is to FC is what the question is about, right? Now, this goes back to our um, midpoint theorem. So do you remember what exactly is midpoint theorem, right? So if at all you have A, B, C, if these are two midpoints, you can say D and E are, if at all they are midpoints, you can say that D, E is parallel to B, C. Also, D is half of B, C, right? So we can say this is midpoint here. Now, what about converse? Converse in the sense, if you have a triangle ABC, if you are given that D is a midpoint and drawn a line parallel to BC through D, the where the point to where it is joining E is definitely a midpoint. E also bisects BC. This is converse of midpoint theorem. Right? Now, applying that logic, let us go with the question. Right. Right, so we got to know that this is a midpoint and here also E is bisecting since A equal to ED I have written. Now, let me construct one line which is parallel to BF and also passing through D. Clear? So let me take uh, G here. Right, so let me take a construction BF uh, yeah, or DG which is parallel to BF. Now, what can I conclude from here is, why did I do this construction is, tell me something in the triangle, in triangle BFC, observe in triangle BFC, do you think D is midpoint? D is midpoint and also DG parallel to BF. DG is parallel to BF. So one is a midpoint, definitely. One midpoint is what we have. And we have DG parallel to EF, which means by converse of midpoint theorem, can I say G is also the midpoint of FC? Isn't it? So G is also midpoint of FC. So can I say FG equal to GC? This is by converse of midpoint theorem. Mark it as first one. Next, observe in triangle ADG. In the triangle A, D, G, observe only this triangle. Do you find E is a midpoint? A, D, G, E is definite midpoint. And E, F, E is parallel to D, G because this is our construction, what we have done. Hence, F should be definitely the midpoint of A, G, isn't it? So can I say A, F equal to F, G because again of the same reason, converse of midpoint theorem. So what did I conclude? FG equal to GC and AF equal to FG. All these three are equal parts, which means F and G are points of trisection of AC. So if the question is like F divides in which ratio, that is 1 is to 2. G divides AC in which ratio, that is 2 is to 1. So question can be asked anyhow. Is that clear? Here the question is regarding F divides AC. So F is to AC is what? In the ratio 1 is to 2. Clear at that? using converse of midpoint. Yes, now observe the question number 12, that is R is given A, B and C are given to you in such a way that R is lambda A plus mu B plus mu C, right? So now what I have written is the given question, I have just rearranged and it written in a coordinate form, that's it, 3, 2, minus 5 equal to lambda A, that is lambda into 2 minus 1, 1, B, mu B, which is 1, 3, and minus 2. So in the same way is what I have written. Now what I have done, converted them to IJKs, obviously, yeah. So when I'm just adding them, all these IJKs and all, if I expand and add all these, take I common, J common, K common, what will you get? You'll be getting 2 lambda. See here, observe 2 lambda plus mu minus 2V of I. Clear? That is the first one. Next, minus lambda, next, plus 3 mu, plus V. Okay, now, that is for J. Similarly, for K. Now, that is your the other vector there. Now, question is regarding 
how about your mu lambda and v how are they they are in ap or gp or hp this is your condition that is what you need to figure out first of all you need to understand the question like what are we supposed to find here what are the values of mu lambda and v is what we are going to find them now finding this matrix method would be a better option for us to solve okay now so solving uh, three equations uh, can be very very easy when you apply the matrix methods to solve so what i am going to do is i am it's just like framing equations x plus y plus z all these equal to 5 and all 2x plus 3y plus 7z equal to 7 so all these if you write this is this nothing but your lambda column this is nothing but your mu and this is nothing but your v and these are your constants what you got that is written in a matrix form 2 minus 1 and see observe um, yeah just a minute here So just equating this i coefficients and also 2, 1, minus 2, which is nothing but equal to 3. That is what I have written. Next, minus 1, 3, and 1, which is equal to the j term there. Minus 1, 3, 1, which is equal to 2 there. And coming here for the k1e, just equation, equating the ijks on both the sides. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, which is nothing but equal to minus 5. Without your ijks or lambda mu and v is what i have written this right now how to solve them matrix methods would be best methods for here now observe here carefully this is your row one and this is your row two and this is your row three solving part we need to bring as many zeros as possible now observe here if i multiply if i change my row two second row i am changing like 2 into row 2. If I multiply this with 2, I get minus 2. And minus 2 plus 2 will give me 0, isn't it? Minus 2 plus 2 will be giving me 0. So 2 R2 minus R1 will be giving me 0. Clear? That is one change what I can do. Again, for R3, what is the change I am doing? That is nothing but, again, 2 R3, which is 2 times R3. 2 R3 is 2 into 1, 2. Minus R1, I will go with minus R1. Uh, yeah, for the second one, Nana, see, observe here. 2 R2 will be giving me minus 2. Minus 2 plus 2 will be giving me 0. So, take 2 R2 plus R1 there. For R3, you change this. Now, how are we changing? Observe 2. First row, I'm not at all changing. 2, 1, minus 2 with 3. Next, R2. What are we supposed to do? Multiply the whole row with 2 and add R1. Multiply the whole row with 2 and add R1 values. Now, minus 2 plus 2, which is 0 here. Next, this into 2, which is 6. 6 plus 1, that is 7. Next, this into 2, 1 into 2, that is 2. 2 plus minus 2, which is 0. Next, coming for 2 into 2, which is 4. 4 plus 3, which is 7. That's done. Next, coming for R3, what are we supposed to do here for R3? Multiply the whole R3 with 2 and then subtract R1. That is a 2 into, uh, so 1 into 2, that is 2, 2 minus 2. So here we have 2 minus 2, that is 0. Next, multiply this with 2, which is minus 4, minus 4, minus 1, which is minus 5. Next, this one you multiply by 2, that is minus 6. Minus 6 minus minus 2, which is minus 6 plus 2, which is minus 4. Next, minus 5 into 2, which is minus 10. Minus 10 minus 3, which is minus 13. Clear? So, from this, it is just like solving your x, y, z. See, the, the, let this be your x, y, and z. See, x, y, z. Clear? So, just like your lambda, mu, and v. Clear. So, what did we get? I got 0 from this one. 0 lambda plus 7 mu plus 0 v equal to 7. This and this become 0. So, mu equal to 7 by 7. 1 is what I ended up with. Clear? Right? Now, observe this third row. Third row, if you observe, that is minus 5 mu minus 4 v. This is with your lambda mu and v okay so minus 5 mu minus 4 v equal to minus 13 and mu i already got it to be 1 i will substitute here 
right? So that is nothing but minus 5. That minus 13 comes here plus 13 equal to 4V. So how much is this? This is uh, 8, I guess. So 8 equal to 4V. From here, we got V equal to 2. Similarly, you just replace your mu and V in the first equation. That is nothing but your, as I said, this is lambda, this is mu, and this is V. So what do we get? That is your 2 lambda plus mu minus 2V equal to 3. So you got your mu and lambda, uh, sorry, mu and V is what you have. You just substitute these two here, these two values substitute in this equation and get the value of lambda. Clear? So after figuring it out, you can just analyze what is the value of mu, lambda and V and all these, whether they are in AP or GP or HP is what find. That's it. Clear? Go through. Take a recording, uh, pause it or just go back, view it once again what we have done and then do it. Oh, just a minute. Yeah. So the 15th question, I'll just uh, tell you how to revise your formula. I thought it was recorded. It was not recorded. Okay, just let me go about that. So the 15th question, the rotation about x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, Keeping z-axis fixed, you will be rotating your yz plane. Keeping x-axis fixed, rotate your yz plane. Keeping your uh, next uh, y-axis fixed, rotate your x and y plane. Okay, now x and z plane. So if at all you do it this way, your point A1, A2, A3 will be changed to some other new three points and those new three points are given with this, okay? Rotation about x-axis, rotation about y-axis, rotation about z-axis. So let me give you some formula, three formula, three points are given. How to remember them? See, you are fixing your x-axis in the sense this is your A1 only, fixing your y-axis, this is A2 only, fixing your z-axis, A3 only. Clear? Now go with your a1, A2, and this is your A3. A1, A2, A3. Right. Now, you already completed your A1 here. Use your A2 and A3. So, please mention A2, A3 here. Here also mention A2, A3. Some other points are also going to come now. Now, A2 is here. So, hence, uh, fix A2. So, A3 and A1. Please mention A3, A1 in a cyclic order only. Here also A3 and A1. Right, now A3 is fixed here, hence go with A1 and A2. So this is your A1, A2, here also your A1, A2. Is that clear? Right. Now start with cos sin. First one, cos sin. Next here, sin cos. Next again, cos sin. Clear with that? Again, as you have written cos sin, take sin cos here. Sin and cos. Here, as you have written sin and cos, take cos and sin. Next will be sine and cos in a zigzag manner. That's it. Now, take plus in between every term here. No problem at all. Take plus, plus, plus everywhere. And few points you will be getting negatives here. So for the first one, here you get a negative. Later, here is what you get a negative. And later, here is what you get a negative. So for these three terms, for only these three is what you are getting your negatives. Now, our question is regarding what? you are fixing, like it is rotated about z-axis. So z-axis, see, observe, this is your x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Fix this. This plane is rotated. x-y plane is rotated. That means the case 3. Your x-y plane is rotated about 90 degrees. So your theta equal to 90 degrees rotation, you will consider in the third case, apply theta equal to 90 degrees. So is it nothing but a1 cos 90? So that is nothing but A1 cos 90 plus A2 sin 90 comma next minus A1 minus A1 sin 90 plus A2 cos 90 again A3. So these are the three values. Cos 90 is anyhow 0, sin 90 is 1. So hence it is A2 and here sin 90 is 1, hence it is minus A1 and obviously A3. So this is the new point to which your point will be shifted there. That is your A2 minus, oh, just a minute, right? A2 minus A1 and A3. A2 minus A1 and A3 is your option C. That's how you get your answer.
Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, right, today we are going to discuss the vectors, uh, part three, like uh, this is the third part of the equations, what we are solving. Right, so f of t is given as step t i minus t minus step functions. These are all step functions, step, step x in the sense, it's the greatest integer function, isn't it? Suppose if you have a 3.5 under step, so it is just taking the integral value, that is your three, the greatest integer. Okay, clear, just before, see, you have three and four in between that you have your 3.5. So just before this, what is the greatest integer? So that's it. Suppose if you have a minus 2.3, tell me, so where is this minus 2.3, minus three and minus two, this will be somewhere, minus 2.3 will be somewhere here and the greatest integer just before that will be your minus three, right? So that's your step function. Now the question is relating to um, five by four. <clears throat> So the question is relating to the value of t is 5 by 4. So what is uh, f of t? So 5 by 4 is 1 point something. So step 1 point something. It's just the integral part you just consider. So step 1 point something is 1i minus. So this will be your 5 by 4. t is your 5 by 4 anyhow. Minus step 1 point, step one point something. Yes, again, j. Next Plus, observe here, one point uh, something plus one, that will be your two point something, isn't it? So one point, some, this is your one point something plus one, that will be your two point something. So step two point something will be 2k, clear? So f of t is what I have written. This is nothing but i minus so one by four, take the LCM, one by four j plus 2k. So this is our f of t. Now, what did they say? They said that this f of t, and this is your f of 5 by 4, you can write, please. Yeah, so this is your f of 5 by 4. And the other function, so that value and the other function, what is given here? Other vector, sorry. Yeah, so they said the other vector, i plus lambda j plus mu k. So these are parallel vectors. So whenever these two are parallel vectors, obviously I can compare their uh, x, y, z, I mean to say, i, j, k components, isn't it? So obviously one by one equal to <clears throat> minus one by four by lambda, which is equal to two by mu. Is that clear? So equating these two and equating these two. So minus one by four equal to lambda, that is your one case. And the other one is a two by mu equal to one implies mu equal to two. So is that clear? So what are the values of lambda and mu, which is nothing but minus one by four and two is your answer for this question. Right, now coming for the next question. So your vector r is given like 3p plus 4q and 2r is given like p minus 3q. Then the question is regarding R and Q, do they have same direction or opposite direction? So the question is completely based on R and the Q components only. So can we eliminate P in both the cases, isn't it? So what is your P from here? It is R minus 4Q upon 3. And what is P from here? 2R plus 3Q, right? So you just equate them both, right? So R minus 4Q equal to three times the two R plus three Q, just equating them both, right? Now expand it, this is six R plus nine Q. So bring your R on one side, so that will be your minus five R equal to 13 Q. Now observe here clearly, what do you find? R and Q are of opposite direction, isn't it? So they are definitely of opposite direction because positive and negative is what you find there. And also, now tell me, your R is nothing but, yeah, so 13 by 5 times Q. 13 by 5 in the sense what? So it will be 2 point something, right? So obviously, your mod R will be, if you observe a mod there, so mod R will be greater than 2 point something, obviously, right, times Q. So greater than two point something in the sense mod R is greater than two times that mod Q. Is that clear? Uh, 
Right now, question number 21 there, you are given 1, 2, 3 are the position vectors of vectors A, B, and C of a triangle ABC, right? <clears throat> so these are the position vectors given to you, ABC. Question is regarding find the position vector of a point where the bisector of angle A meets BC. So bisector of angle A is meeting BC. So which means your AD is the angular bisector, right? So if at all, um, yeah, the side opposite to vertex uh, AB, so side opposite to vertex C will be your C and the side opposite to vertex B will be your small b if you consider these are the length of the triangles, the sides of the triangles there. So obviously, how does D divide? D divides in the ratio C is to B, isn't it? So D divides BC in the ratio C is to B. So for which, if at all, we need to get the coordinates of the point D, we need to understand what is the ratio in which this D is dividing BC. In order to get that ratio, we know D divides BC in the ratio AB is to AC. Is that clear? Just the sides ahead that, right? Now, in order to find out what is the length AB and what is the length AC, what do we have to do? We need to figure out what is a vector AB there, isn't it? So how can you relate AB? Just the subtraction there. So it is nothing but OB. What is your AB? AB is nothing but OB minus OA. Just take the subtraction of these two. OB minus OA. What is it now? So that is 2 minus 4. That is minus 2. 3 minus 7. Minus 4. 4 minus 8. That is your minus 8. Now, for getting the length, length is nothing but under root of 2 square plus 4 square plus 8 square. Clear? So you will get one particular length from here. And here also in the same way, go ahead. So AC, here also, what is your AC? Nothing but OC minus OA, right? So OC minus OA, 2 minus 4, uh, 5 minus uh, 7, and 7 minus uh, 8, right? So here also, what will be your length? That is your under root 4 plus 4 plus 1, isn't it? That will be your 3 from here. And coming here, what is it? 20 and um, 84. Yes, we've done an error here. Yeah, so 4 minus 8, that will be your minus 4. And this becomes your 16. So 20 plus 16, which is 36. That means your length is 6 here and the length is 3 here. So what is the ratio in which D divides? 6 is to 3, which is in the sense 2 is to 1, right? So now how do you get the point D? It is nothing but... 2 times 257 plus 1 times 234 upon 2 plus 1, that is 3. So, which will be your uh, 2 into 2, 4, 4 plus 1. Directly you may do it, okay? So, 4, 4 plus, uh, yeah, 2 into 2 is 4, 4 plus 2, that is 6. Next, uh, 10, 10 and uh, 3, that is 13. Next, 14 and 4, that will be your 18 by 3. So, in write down in the vector form. This is only for you just to uh, solve the problem in a more easy way, taking the comma symbol. But please do a vector notation there, right? So, 1 by 3 of 6i plus 13j plus 18k will be your answer there. So, understood? So, what is the position vector of the point D which divides BC? Clear? The angular uh, bisector. Now observe even for this question also, 22nd question, you are given A, B, C, B, the position vectors of the vertices of the triangle A, B, C, you are given these three. Then the length of the internal angular bisector of angle, it's the same thing. So what is the ratio in which D divides? D divides in the ratio AB is to AC. So figure out what is AB and what is AC. Just by subtraction, OB minus OA, OC minus OA, you will get that vector and this vector. Find out their magnitude, you will get the length here. Both the lengths take the ratio, you will get the ratio. Some X is to Y is what you may get the ratio. So how will you get the point D? That is nothing but X is to the point C plus Y is to that point uh, B 
by x plus y. So obviously you'll get a vector here, isn't it? But the question is regarding what is the length of the internal angular bisector of angle A. So AD, if at all, we can find out what is ADC. Once you got your point D, this is how you will get it, isn't it? So once you got your point D, AD is nothing but OD minus OA. So figure out what is OD minus OA, just the subtraction of these two, you can take it. Now the question is regarding length. So take the magnitude of AD. There you'll get length. So something square plus something square plus something square. Understood? So 22nd, you can do it that way. Fine. Now for the question number 23, A1, A2, A3, it's a regular polygon, they said. Polygon is a complete closed figure, isn't it? So it may have any number of line segments. It's a complete closed figure made of line segments. Suppose if it is A, B, C, D, E, F. Now the vector... A1, A2, A2, A3, so on till An, A1 is equal to how much? Now think about it. Suppose when we are talking about a triangle A, B, C, right? So what is AB plus BC plus CA? AB plus BC plus CA will be resulting in a zero vector, isn't it? So AB plus BC plus CA will be resulting in a zero vector. Because see, observe one thing. You started from the position A, traveling in a path AB plus BC and written to the same position CA, which means ultimately your resultant is a zero there, isn't it? So that's your zero vector there, clear? So AB plus BC plus CA is a zero vector. Similarly, as many sides as you have doesn't matter at all, isn't it? AB plus BC plus CD plus DE plus EF plus FA, you are going back to the same position, which means your resulting is, your resultant is a zero there, right? So observe here what is given in the question. A1, A2, plus A2, A3, plus so on, till A, N, A1. So it has traveled all these N sides and came back to position A1, which means what? Your resulting vector is a zero there. No problem, no need of any solving for that particular question. Is that clear? Right. Now, <clears throat> question number 25. So the point through... The point on the line through A, whose position vector e is A, suppose you have a line here. So there is a point uh, P, it seems, on the line through A, whose position vector is A, and the line is parallel to some other vector B. There is a line which is, this is a line which is parallel to some other vector B. Now, it's already given your PA length. This is nothing but the length here, okay? So, PA length will be equal to 6 units is what they have already given us. Then, what is the position vector of P is our question. That means, what will be OP? What is this vector is what they are talking about, right? So, let me consider the position, uh, the point P vector. I will just take it to be R bar. Your A is nothing but A bar and vector uh, B is already given for us, right? Now, can you tell me what is the equation of such a line which is passing through a point A and parallel to some other vector B. So obviously, AP, isn't it? So the point itself has got no meaning there. It has to be paired up with some other vector to create an artificial vector there, isn't it? So your AP is one vector you can consider. This is parallel to vector B in the sense some T times vector B. AP is T times vector B is the equation of this. So now what is your AP? Nothing but OP minus OA, isn't it? And what is your OP? OP is vector R minus OA is vector A, which is your TB. Is that clear? Right. So now uh, coming for, this is one part what we have done, which means the question is regarding what is the position vector of this. So R equal to A plus TB is what I get it. Okay. Now tell me something. Is this vector A also? Yeah, if I consider this is the position vector here. So obviously this is also parallel to, can I say A equal to TB here? Right? So A equal to TB. Right. Now coming for what is given here, PA equal to 6 is what given for us. Oh, okay, 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 okay. PA equal to 6. All right. So from here itself, I need not write this. Mm. Yeah. So from here, I'm just going to take the magnitude there, isn't it? So magnitude of AP equal to T times magnitude of B because I am given the magnitude of PA, right? So what is the magnitude of AP? It's already given to be 6. I will just take 6, which is equal to T times magnitude of vector B. Clear? So now from here, I'm just, see, if I know what is the point, what is the value of T, that's enough for me. So what is T equal to? 
six by mod b. So t is our six by mod b. Just replace that here. You'll get it. So now finally, what I can conclude is r equal to vector a plus what is t? That I got it. Six by mod b times vector b. Right. So you can just look out for your option there. A plus six by mod b into vector b. You can just take a plus or minus is what we can consider. Is that clear? Right. So direction, it doesn't matter. You can take it in any other direction. Yes. Now for the question number 13, if your A, B, C are given by these three vectors, these are all linearly independent vectors is what they said and mod c equal to root 3. Now, when they said these are all linearly independent, a, b, c are linearly independent in the sense what they take will definitely be equal to 0. Clear? So, just take the determinant of uh, all these coefficients you please mention, 1, 1, 1, uh, 4, 3, 4, 1, alpha and beta. So, this is the complete determinant equated to 0. You get some relation in between your alpha and beta. Right. So let's start. Now, in order to solve this, then going by a normal method, why can't we just apply um, column operations? OK, so I'm just going to change C2 as C2 minus C1, column 2, this one. OK, and column 3, column 3 will also be changed as C3 minus C1. So because when I subtract, keeping the first column the same, 1, 4, 1, I'm keeping them the same. Just to subtract, in order to replace your column 2, replace it by C2 minus C1. So 1 minus 1, which is 0, right? So now 3 minus 4, which is minus 1, and alpha minus 1. Similarly, 1 minus 1, 0, 4 minus 4, which is also 0. Now again here also your beta minus 1, right? Now you can equate this to 0. We have got as many number of zeros as possible. Right, what is the determinant? Now, 1 into leaving this and this. So, the determinant of this will be your answer. So, minus of beta minus 1. Can I just directly take it 1 minus beta minus 0 anyhow, which is equal to 0. And this 0 and 0 doesn't matter at all for us, which means beta equal to 1 is what I got. One value done. Okay, with that. So, I already got beta equal to 1. Now, what else is given for us? So, mod C uh, yeah, magnitude of C is root 3 given for us. Now, tell me what is magnitude of C? So, your C is nothing but uh, given vector 1, alpha and beta. Okay. So, 1 square plus alpha square plus beta square is given to be a root 3 value there. Right. Just squaring on both sides. Alpha square plus beta square equal to 3. Your beta, you already got to be 1. Substitute there. Alpha square equal to 3 minus 1, which is, um, yeah. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, sorry. 1 plus is there, right? 1 plus, sorry. Uh, 1 plus alpha square plus beta square equal to 3. So, alpha square plus beta square equal to alpha square plus beta square equal to 2. I already got beta to be 1. So, alpha square equal to 1, which means alpha equal to plus or minus 1. That's it. There ends the case. So, your alpha is plus or minus 1 along with beta is 1. Just take the determinant equated to 0 now. Right now, observe the question. The vector A has components 2p and 1 with respect to the rectangular Cartesian <coughs> coordinate system. So 2p and 1, which is nothing but 2pi plus j is what you consider, only x and y. Next, the system is rotated to a certain angle about the origin in the counterclockwise direction, anticlockwise direction. Now, if with respect to the new system, the angle A, uh, sorry, the vector A has got the components p plus 1 and 1. So that means like this vector A is changed like vector b after some rotation theta. Clear? Now tell me, how do you get your p values? So when this vector is changing to this vector, there is absolutely no change in the length of the vector there, isn't it? So length of the vector in the sense magnitude of the vector will never change even though you are changing its direction. Isn't it? You are Even though you are rotating, the length will never change. So hence, what I can consider is... Uh, the magnitude of A equal to magnitude of B is what I can consider, which is under root of 4P square plus 1 equal to under root of P plus 1 whole square plus 1. Take the required squaring on both sides, solve for the value of P, you get it from there. Right. Now, question number 17, if you observe, A, B, C, D are the position vectors of the four points A, B, C and D in a plane. 
also given uh, a minus d b minus d c minus d their magnitudes magnitude of a minus d observe carefully so a minus d so is it nothing but the ad bd and cd isn't it so ad is nothing but od minus oa or da you can consider which is nothing but oa minus od clear so now when we have these two points the position vectors using that position vectors we can frame what is ad, uh, AD or da da oh let me write da db and dc this is nothing but od oa minus od oa minus od and uh, these are all vectors notate and db is nothing but ob minus od dc is nothing but oc minus od right now is nothing but <clears throat> a minus d here we have b minus d here we have c minus d now what was given in the question think about it you are given these three vectors have equal magnitude which means their lengths are all equal isn't it lengths are all equal if they have their equal magnitude given in the question obviously their length of the vectors are all equal that means the distance between da db dc is all equal now they said point d is which point of the triangle See, it's given A, B, C is a triangle for you. D is somewhere such that D A equal to D B equal to D C. So think there is some point D, it seems, such that we got D A equal to D B, which is equal to D C. Now tell me a point which is equidistant from each of the three vertices. Is it nothing but the circumcenter or not? Can we frame a circle there? Considering your area as your radius. BD as your radius, CAD also your radius, isn't it? So a point which is equidistant from each of the three vertices is called it circumcenter. Is that clear? Now, what is an incenter? Suppose if you have a triangle, if they said that ABC is a triangle and if we have a circle inside it, this point is the incenter and that particular point is equidistant from each of the sides, isn't it? This is the side BC. This is side AC and that is side AB. So the point which is equidistant from each of the sides is nothing but it's in center. And the point which is equidistant from each of the vertices is its circumcenter. Is that clear? Now for this particular question, it is a circumcenter because this point D is equidistant from each of the points A, B, C is what given in the question. Right. Next coming for question number 19, the position vectors of A and B are given to you and the position vector of C is also given to us. Now observe question number 19. Yeah. <clears throat> it's given in such a way that position vector of C, that is OC, let me consider, you are already given OA equal to A and OB equal to B. Right. And you are given OC to be how much? A by 2 plus B by 3. Now, question is regarding where is C? C whether it is outside the triangle OAB. See, I'm considering O, A and B here. Okay. So this is vector A and this is vector B I am considering. So where is C is what the question is all about. So question C. Now C tell me, is it inside the triangle OAB or outside the triangle OAB? Position. Now coming for the position, when we are talking about the position, tell me something. Just take the LCM here. So that is your 3A plus 2B, isn't it? Now, do you remember this 3A plus 2B? If at all we have 3 plus 2 in the denominator. Oh, sorry, 6 is to be written here, right? So if at all we have 3 plus 2, 5 in the denominator, some magic is going to get ready for us, isn't it? Now for that, what I'm going to do is 3A plus 2B by 5, I will write into 5, I will write by 6, I will just place it here, clear? into something by something is what I'm considering, but that something will be my five. Why, what is the reason? If I take three plus two is five, do you observe that this is nothing but the ratio in which the point C is dividing, isn't it? 
3 times a plus 2 times b by 3 plus 2. Right. So in which ratio the point C is dividing AB? Point C is dividing AB in the ratio 3 is to 2. Agree with that? So somewhere point here. Suppose if you have a point C here which is dividing in the ratio 3 is to 2. Do you get it that way or not? 3 into B. Uh, yeah, uh, I must take it the other way around. Okay. I would take 3 and 2 here. Clear? So, 3 into A plus 2 into B by 2 plus 3, 5. Right? Now, till here it is fine. Now, what about this 5 by 6? If at all 5 by 6, yeah, obviously this is less than 1. So, when this is less than 1, your C will be ranging somewhere here in between your OAB. Clear? In between here. Suppose if it is greater than 1, it will be somewhere lying outside, somewhere here. C will be exterior. If it is greater than 1, this point C will be an exterior point. See, observe these are the two vectors. Obviously, C will be in between this range only. Agree with that, which is less than 1, less than 1. Clear? Understood? If it is greater than 1, obviously, it will be ranging outside there. Now, what is our answer? C is inside the triangle OAB only undoubtedly. Is that clear? Right. Now question number 22. If the vertices of the triangle are given for us, ABC vertices are given for us, length of the internal bisector of angle A. This we have done many times that you can do it. Okay. Refer to the previous questions. You will find it and you will get it. Next, question number 25. Now tell me, the line passes through the position vectors. Just a moment, please. <clears throat> right, a line passes through the points whose position vectors are so and so. Let me consider point A, 1, 1, minus 2, point B, 1, minus 3, and 1. Now the question is regarding what is the position vector of a point on it? Okay, let me consider the position vector of a point, some P I will consider, such that it is at a distance, uh, position vector of a point on it at unit distance from the first point. Okay, so which means the question is regarding they want their P A length, magnitude of P A should be equal to 1. This is what the question says, right? So understand the question clearly, a line is passing through two points whose position vectors are given by A and B. Now, the position vector of a, uh, yeah, some point is what you need, which is at a distance of one unit from the first point. Clear? Now, can we frame the line equation here actually? Isn't it? So, let me consider, do you remember x minus point by the drs is a line equation how you will consider, isn't it? x minus a point by the drs. Now, what are drs of ab? drs of ab, 0. And uh, yeah, 4 and minus 2 minus 1, that is your minus 3. 1 minus 1, 0. 1 minus minus 3. Yeah, 1 plus 3 and minus 2 minus 1. Yeah, DRs. Now, if at all, I have to find the line equation. Line equation, how do I relate? X minus one of the points you can consider. I would consider point A. X minus 1 by 0 equal to Y minus 1 by 4, which is equal to z minus minus 2, which is z plus 2 by minus 3, right? So, this is a line equation. Equate it to some t, right? So, from here, what is x equal to? 0 into t. Equate these two. 0 into t. That is 0 plus 1. Fine. Now, y equal to what? 4t plus 1. And z equal to minus 3t minus 2. Minus 3t minus 2. Is that clear? So you got your x, y, z. And what are these x, y, z actually? That is your r, isn't it? X, y, z. Right. Uh, now, what did they say? P, A equal to 1 is what you need. The distance between P, A. So x, y, z is what you already got it. 1, 4t plus 1, minus 3t minus 2. This point is your r. And 1, 1 and minus 2. This point is your yeah, this is your vector A you can consider. So their distance is nothing but take their distance, equate it to 1 under root of 1 minus 1, 0, whole square plus 4t plus 1 minus 1, that is 4t whole square plus, this is minus uh, 3t minus 2, 
minus of minus 2 plus 2, which is you can take it minus 3t whole square equal to 1 and figure out the value of t from their resubstitution. So observe after solving this, you got your 25 t square. 25 t square is nothing but under root of 5 t whole square. Take a mod 5 t equal to 1, t equal to plus or minus 1 by 5. So substitute this in your point R. That is nothing but <clears throat> 1, 4 t plus 1 and minus 3 t minus 2. Just substitute the value of uh, t equal to 1 by 5 under one case, minus 1 by 5 under the other case. You might get two options. Please check for them thoroughly. You get it. Right? Solving part is on you. Yes, hello everyone. So, welcome to yet another video of uh, vectors. So, so, this is based on the product of vectors. Now, uh, coming for the product of vectors, what is the, uh, uh, yeah, so angle between two vectors, if you observe it is given by the formula, cos theta is nothing but a dot b by mod a mod b mod in the sense the magnitude of vector a and vector b right so cos of angle between the two vectors a and b is given by this formula now when we are talking about projection of a on b suppose if you have oa and ob observe oa and ob is what i have drawn these are the two vectors oa is one vector and ob is the other vector represented by a bar and b bar now coming for what is the angle between these two, I have represented that to be theta degrees there. Now, what do you mean by projection of A on B? That means, uh, suppose, if you place a light over here, right? So, obviously, on top of it, if you place a light, so you will find the shadow of that OA on the vector B, which is called as your OB length. So, that is the length of the shadow. That length of the shadow is nothing but the length of the projection of A on B because on B is what, on the vector B is what we are observing. The length of the shadow of this OA when it is falling on OB, isn't it? So, if at all you have a big light here, yeah. So, obviously, let us take a tubelet kind of thing here. So, when this light is kept there, you will have a shadow of OA falling on OB. That shadow length is called projection of this vector A on the vector B. Is that clear? Right. Now, our intention is to find uh, OB. Now, how do I find OB? So, if you observe this as a right angle triangle, what is the cos theta? Cos theta in the sense adjacent by hypotenuse. Now, what is our adjacent side? Adjacent is OB and the hypotenuse is OA. So, that is what I have written here. Cos theta is OB by OA. Now, what is OB is what our required question is. So, for getting OB, is it nothing but OA cos theta? Right. So now coming for what is cos theta? Cos theta is nothing but, see, theta is nothing but the angle between vectors A and uh, B. Clear? Vectors A and B represented like theta. Now, A dot B by mod A mod B. And this OA, OA is nothing but, yeah, the length of this vector, which is mod A that is given by magnitude A, which is nothing but OB. Now, you can just cancel these two. So what is the length of the projection? projection of vector A on B is nothing but OB is given by A dot B by mod B. Here. So, this is the formula. Now, observe the question 3 given here. The question 3 states, you are given a vector A and a vector B. So, think in a similar terms. The projection of A on B is what we want. So, is this nothing but A dot B by mod B? Clear? Upon now coming for a projection of B on A also again A dot B. See whether you call it A dot B or B dot A, the dot product remains the same. Upon as this is a projection of B on A. Now on A is what we are looking at. So that will be your mod A. Now these both gets cancelled. It's nothing but mod A by mod B or magnitude of vector A by magnitude of vector B. Now, magnitude of vector A, you know that that is nothing but under root of 2 square plus 3 square plus 6 square taken under root. And even here, magnitude of vector B is under root of 4 plus 4 plus 1, right? So, whatever be the answer you get, so that will be your answer there. So, observe 36 plus 4, that is 40, 40 plus 9, 49. So, you'll be getting a root 7, yeah, root 49, which is 7 upon, this will be 9 in the sense 3. So, 7 by 3 will be your answer for that question 3. Clear? Right. Now, going for the question number four. Now, what is given? If, yeah, 
if op if the vector op in xy plane whose magnitude is root 3 makes an angle 60 degrees with respect to y axis now try to analyze the figure there right yeah coming for this one the fourth question there observe the vector op in xy plane so let me take this is my x y and z plane so what do you observe here so you find a vector op in xy plane it seems whose magnitude so you please mention op magnitude will be equal to the root 3 is given there making an angle of 60 degrees with a y axis so observe here carefully 60 degrees with y axis in the sense obviously it will be how much with x axis yes so that will be a 30 degrees now the length of component of the vector i mean length of the component of vector op in the direction of x axis is what they wanted right so what is the component of vector op in the direction of x axis in the sense what do we have to consider obviously the projection of ob on x axis if you consider what will that be that is nothing but uh, let me consider this vector with some ai uh, let me take a b vector here all right consider a vector b now when you consider that way so my the other vector is a vector b there okay now consider your op vector as a and uh, vector along the x axis as b if you observe so what is nothing but the projection of op on b clear so that is a component length of the component or length of the projection of the vector op on b in the sense obviously a dot b by mod b this is what the length of the projection right now coming for uh, finding out how about a dot b what do you mean by a dot b is this nothing but mod a mod b cos theta right so mod a mod b cos theta because what do we know regarding cos theta cos theta that is a dot b by mod a mod b now from here what is a dot b mod a mod b cos theta upon mod b now tell me what is mod a mod a is nothing but the magnitude of op which is nothing but your root 3 mod b mod b got cancelled and cos theta theta is the angle between op and ox which is nothing but 30 degrees that is my cos 30 degrees now what is it so root 3 times is it root 3 by 2 which is nothing but 3 by 2 will be your answer there clear understood the question so drawing the figure is very important here understanding the question because the op is a vector which is making an angle of 60 degrees with x axis with y axis is what given hence it will be making an angle of 30 degrees with respect to x axis right so i am just considering op as vector a and the vector along ox as b hence i will be getting the angle between these two as 30 degrees component of a vector a on b if i say which is nothing but a dot b by mod b. Question is regarding what is the length of the component? That is nothing but a dot b by mod b. Now coming for a dot b, what is it? Mod a mod b cos theta upon vector, uh, magnitude of the vector b. That anyhow got cancelled and your vector a is nothing but given as a root 3 magnitude and 30 is nothing but the angle between them. Clear with that? Right. Now question number 7 there. All right now what is the question telling us projection of a on the vector making equal angles with coordinate axis now try to understand the question clearly draw the figure properly there is some vector a you are given that to be 4i minus 3j plus 2k right so you are given you are asked to find the projection of vector a on some vector b such that what is this vector b is making vector b is making equal angles with the coordinate axis x y z axis clear 
Now also this vector B has a magnitude root 3. So vector B has a magnitude root 3 is already given for us. You can also find the magnitude of uh, A vector, which is nothing but under root of 16 plus 9 plus 4, which is nothing but 7. Let us keep everything ready. Now observe, try to understand the question clearly. Now vector B is making equal angles with X, Y, Z axis, they said, which means obviously their DC is L equal to M equal to N. Can I take because L, M, N are the um, direction cosines that is cos theta or cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma. When your alpha, beta, gamma remains the same, all the L, M, N values remain the same there. Right. So when they are all making make equal angles and we also know relation L square plus M square plus N square equal to one, which means is it three L square equal to one, which implies L square is one by three. Hence L is one by root three, actually a plus or minus one by root three is what you can consider. Right. Now, if I talk about vector B, how can I take vector B? Is it nothing but 1 by root 3 times i plus j plus k, isn't it? Clear with that what I have written? So I am considering my vector b as 1 by root 3 times i plus j plus k. If you observe, l, m, n, isn't it? So all your l is nothing but 1 by root 3 i, m is 1 by root 3 j like that. You will be getting a vector b there, right? Now what is the question? The question is about the projection of a on B. Projection of A on B in the sense, what do we write? Is it nothing but A dot B by mod B, isn't it? Now, what is your A dot B? You have your vector A. You just now found your vector B. Observe vector A and vector B dot product. So, 1 by root 3 will be here. It's a multiplication of I components j components and k components later adding them so you've got 1 into 4 that is 4 plus 1 into minus 3 that is minus 3 plus 1 into 2 that is plus 2 so i just completed a dot b upon now what is mod b mod b what is given for me uh mod b now what is my vector b vector b uh, it's actually this one, isn't it? So what is the mod of this? So is it nothing but 1 by root 3 times uh, square root of 1 plus 1 plus 1, that is a root 3. Is that clear? Right? Now what is it? Now 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 2. So obviously these two anyhow gets cancelled. So 3 by root 3. Hence we got root 3 as our answer there. Is the question clear for everyone? Right? Understood the point there? Just revise, just go through once again what we have. Right, so did you all understand the process behind it? So vector B is what we have derived on our own, making the given statement there, vector making equal angles with the coordinate axis. So obviously LMN are equal, I have considered, from their L square equal to 1 by 3, L equal to plus or minus 1 by root 3. So obviously 1 by root 3 and I plus J plus K is what I have taken. Clear with that? Right, so let's go ahead with the next question. Right now, observe the question number nine. Uh, you've got P, Q, R, and S. These are all the four points given. Then the length of the component of R, S on P, Q is your question. Now, tell me what is R, S vector? So, how do I relate R, S vector? O, S minus O, R. That is three minus two. That is one. Next, minus two minus zero. That is minus two. And minus 1, minus of minus 3, plus 3, minus uh, 1, plus 3, which is 2. That is your RS vector. And coming for PQ vector. What is PQ? OQ minus OP. So this minus this. So that will be your minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 2, minus 0. That is a 2. And 0 minus of minus 1, 0 plus 1. Right? So please uh, do figure out, uh, yeah, what is mod PQ? Mod PQ is what we need under root of 4 plus 4 plus 1 
that is your three. Now observe the question clearly. What they said was, what is the length of component of RS on PQ? So let me consider this as my vector A and vector B. Now the question changes to component of vector A on vector B. It's again your A dot B by mod B. That's it. Clear. So what is your A dot B? You just multiply these two. One into minus two. That is minus two. Plus minus two into two, which is minus four. Plus two into one. That is two. By what is it? Under uh, mod B is nothing but three. There. Clear with that question. So you just have to figure out what that is. So that is your uh, minus six uh, plus two, which is uh, yeah, four by three. But you can just take a mod there, isn't it? Because that is the length of the component there. So 4 by 3 will be your answer there. Yes. Now go with the question number 12 there. Your A and B are two unit vectors. And uh, theta be the angle between these two vectors A and B. Question is regarding what is uh, A plus B magnitude of A plus B whole square minus magnitude of A minus B. B whole square, right? So when I expand this one, what do I get? A square plus B square plus 2A dot B. Please do mention that. Minus of here also A square plus B square minus 2A dot B. Clear? So when you expand it, what do you get? A square plus B square plus 2A dot B minus A square minus b square plus 2a dot b. Now, these both with these both gets cancelled. You are left with a 4a dot b. Now, what do you mean by a dot b? Angle between two vectors, isn't it? So, a dot b is nothing but uh, cos theta. Uh, so, yeah, what is your cos theta equal to a dot b by mod a mod b? So, from here, 4 times a dot b is nothing but mod a mod b cos theta and they said a and b are two unit vectors hence this is unit vector unit vector mod a will be mod b will be equal to one hence your final answer will be a four cos theta clear so that will be your answer next coming for question number 13 13th question if you observe the vector x which is perpendicular to both A and B. See, let me consider this as my point A and point B. So, tell me one vector which is perpendicular to both A and B. Suppose if you have X, Y plane. Okay, now. So, uh, yeah, just let me go back. Yeah. So, and if at all you have, this is your, uh, this is X, Y and this will be your Z plane. Let it be. Clear. Yeah. So, now any two points, if I observe A and B, so, a vector which is perpendicular to both these will be in the direction of Z axis. Yes or no? So, uh, if at all I say some vector which is perpendicular to two vectors, it is nothing but that X vector is same as the cross product of A and B. Clear? So, it's a cross product of A and B. Remember one thing, a vector which is perpendicular to both A and B is same as the cross product of A and B. Now, how do I relate cross product of A and B? So, that is I, J, K components you take. 2 minus 3, 1, 1 minus 2 and 3. So, you just take the determinant there. So, observe carefully. I, J, K, I have written 2 minus 3 and 1. Those three things. Next, 1 minus 2 and 3. These are the other three things. Now, you just apply the determinant. Expand the determinant. I times so, this will be your 9 minus, minus of minus 2 plus 2. Oh, sorry, minus 9. Minus 9 plus 2. Minus J. See here, remember, you take a minus sign here for the J. For the diamond elements, you get a negative sign there. So, minus J times 3, 2, 0, 6, minus 1 plus K times. So, it will be 3, 2, 0, 6. Uh, no, no. Uh, yeah. K times that will be your minus 4 plus 3. Uh, right. Fine. So, what will be my final answer? Minus 7i. Okay. Minus 5j and minus k. Right. So, this is the vector x that I am talking about. This is my vector x that I am talking about. 
All right. So vector x is perpendicular to these three. Now this also satisfies some condition it is given. Now tell me something vector x as we have written a cross b it might also be some parallel vector to that and how do I relate that it can be multiplied by some constant lambda remember that. So lambda times minus 7i minus 5j minus k is our original vector x. Now they said x dot some other vector equal to 0, i plus 2j minus 7k. Okay, na? so uh, this vector multiplied, x vector multiplied by that is a dot product of these two vectors is 10, it is given for us. So you just multiply these values and get the answer there. Yeah, so what is your x vector? That is minus 7 if I take common. This will be your... Oh, let me take a minus sign common. That's it, not minus 7. Yeah. So minus... Lambda times 7i plus 5j plus k dot i plus 2j minus 7k equal to 0 given for us. Oh, sorry, 10 given for us. Now, is this nothing but minus lambda times product of these two? I components 7, J components 10, again K components that is your minus 7. So, you are left with a 10. So, minus lambda equal to 1 which means lambda equal to minus 1. So, when your lambda is minus 1, so what is your vector X? It is same as 7I plus 5J plus K. That's it. So, that will be your answer. 7i plus 5j plus k. Clear with that question? Right. Next, going ahead further for the question number 15. Right. So what is question number 15 telling us? If theta is acute angle and vectors, this is perpendicular to other vector. Two vectors are perpendicular to each other in the sense, what is their dot product? Obviously, 0, isn't it? So, the dot product of those two is always 0. So, I component multiplied by J component multiplied by K component. Do it. So, that is nothing but your sine theta and minus root 3 cos theta equal to 0, which means your sine theta equal to root 3 cos theta. So, you just bring it down sine theta by cos theta equal to root 3, which means your tan theta equal to root 3, that is your tan 60. So, how do you get your theta? That is your pi by 3. Clear? Understood the question? Pi by 3 is your angle there. Right. Next going for the 17th question in the order. Yeah, so there is a small net problem. Yeah, continue with the question number 19. So what does this tell us? Now you are given few vectors there. That is vector, uh, yeah, magnitude of vectors. That is magnitude of A is 1, magnitude of B is 2, and A minus B square plus A minus 2B whole square. Oh dear, I need to go with the question number 17. All right. Uh, 